Hello, welcome again to the course on Arsenal Processing for Music Applications. We are in the last week of the course, and uh, this week uh, we do not have a coherent topic uh, like the ones we had every week. Instead, uh, we're going to cover some small uh, topics, uh, topics that uh, will help us uh, wrap up the course by uh, reviewing some aspects, by identifying some trends, by um, complementing the material to help you uh, see what could you do next and uh, what type of things uh, you might also be interested in if you were interested with this uh, topic. So in particular, in this uh, lecture, I want to go uh, over the idea of beyond audio signal processing in music applications. So in the case of music, what other things uh, we can do uh, beyond what we have been talking about. And uh, we'll talk about two aspects. One is within the field of audio signal processing. Uh, we will identify some of the topics that uh, we have covered but that maybe we have uh, covered a little bit lightly and that uh, there is room for a lot of much more in-depth studying. And then uh, finally I want to talk about um, aspects that are also relating with analyzing uh, music signals or uh, musical information but that are not strictly based on audio signal processing techniques and that therefore can complement uh, the kinds of things that we have been doing quite well. Let's talk about audio signal processing beyond this course uh, and identify uh, some topics that either we have uh, touched a little bit lightly or that we have not touched and that uh, could deserve more attention if we had had uh, time to do so. So here is a list of uh, such topics. Uh, the first one is uh, the detection and estimation of sinusoids. That's a pretty big topic that uh, we did a very first approximation. We simplified the problem uh, quite a bit, but uh, clearly uh, there is uh, many more uh, advanced uh, techniques and methods that can be used to uh, detect uh, and estimate uh, the values of a sinusoid within a complex signal. Another topic, the idea of partial tracking. Again, uh, we uh, track the harmonics of, or the partials of uh, an audio signal uh, using a quite uh, simple technique that was sufficient for uh, the kind of sounds we, uh, we analyze but again that can be sophisticated uh, much more and we can develop uh, techniques uh, that track uh, the behavior of partials in time and uh, can uh, uh, use uh, more sophisticated methodologies. Uh, the idea of transient modeling in fact is a, an idea that we didn't touch um, but uh, maybe uh, you experience in uh, when analyzing and synthesizing sounds that one of the, the parts of sounds that have a harder time uh, to be modeled are the transients. Uh, so when we have an attack of a note or a very sharp change of uh, some, uh, some signal. In uh, those parts uh, there is uh, quite a few approaches that go beyond what we have done and try to identify those areas, these transients, and develop uh, some specific methodologies to handle those transients, independent of the, the, the steady states uh, or the more stable parts of the sound that can be analyzed with the kinds of things uh, that uh, we did. Another uh, topic is multi-resolution and that's typically one of the biggest uh, shortcomings of the fast Fourier transform approach or at least what people say that is one of the, the things that it clearly lacks is uh, the idea of multi-resolution. The FFT treats uh, all the frequencies, all the spectrum with a linear resolution and uh, this is not uh, right, uh, especially if we talk about audio signals and we talk about perception, our uh, perceptual system is not a linear, uh, uh, it doesn't have a linear resolution, a frequency resolution like the FFT one. So there has been quite a few attempts and approaches 
to, uh, to take uh, care of that and develop uh, methodologies, developing spectral analysis techniques that uh, account for this idea of multi-resolution, for having resolutions that are different at, uh, at different parts of the spectrum or of the frequency ranges. And in fact, this can be done with the FFT, this can be done with the fast Fourier transform, and in the, in the lab uh, of this uh, week, in fact, if you are interested, you can explore that and we propose uh, that as an option for an assignment uh, of this week. Another area is uh, the residual analysis uh, that we have been uh, doing. Uh, we have done again a quite uh, simple analysis of the residual of a signal. We have subtracted the sinusoids of a signal and we have approximated this residual with uh, an stochastic model, a quite simple stochastic model. And again, there is room for uh, a lot of new developments that uh, approach the idea of approximating this residual either from a perceptual point of view or from a source point of view, depending on what type of signals to uh, develop specific models for those type of signals. Uh, and again, there has been quite a bit of work uh, done on these uh, areas. And finally, uh, the idea of uh, synthesis. We have been uh, synthesizing uh, sinusoids and this uh, filter noise uh, for the, the harmonic plus uh, stochastic type of modeling. And uh, we have been doing an implementation that is uh, quite efficient uh, using the inverse FFT. But again, there has been uh, quite a few uh, uh, methodologies proposed uh, as alternative to, for that. And we can synthesize uh, sine waves and uh, noise in uh, other different approaches. And then uh, as a separate topic that is a huge topic and that would deserve uh, many new uh, classes uh, like uh, this one is the idea of completely different modeling approaches. We have done a spectral based approach uh, for modeling, uh, an approach that has been based on analyzing sinusoids and obtaining the residuals and uh, there are zillions of other modeling approaches uh, that can be used for uh, these or other applications. We can model sounds using uh, physical modeling approaches. We can model sounds uh, using uh, other transforms other than the, than the Fourier transform. And in general, uh, there are, have been many proposals for modeling or uh, synthesizing sounds that are quite different from what we have been talking about. So anyway, so the, the, the idea is that uh, there is a lot out there on audio signal processing applied to music and I don't want you to, to get the impression that we have the, what we have been doing is a comprehensive view of the field of audio signal processing for music applications. Uh, no, this was a, a particular view that I think is quite powerful and I hope you appreciate the potential of it but uh, there is much more uh, than this. Let me now uh, mention a few topics that really go beyond audio signal processing. And the idea is that uh, when we want to study music from an engineering perspective, there is uh, much more than just the audio. Audio is a fundamental part, but music is a much more complex phenomena, and we can obtain data to study it and uh, different types of data. So, for example, uh, if we just actually focus on the types of uh, data and signals, we can also analyze the scores or the lyrics of songs, or we can study the gestures uh, and a video of a, of a recording of a particular performance, and we can apply some signal processing related uh, methodologies to these uh, type of signals. But we can also have a lot of textual type of data contextual or uh, community information, that means uh, comments about the music, descriptions about the music, uh, from which we can extract quite meaningful uh, information to describe a piece of music to characterize uh, some uh, particular uh, recording. And in terms of the, the methodologies to, to analyze this type of data, apart from the signal processing uh, type of uh, topics, uh, there are quite a few areas uh, of uh, mathematics, engineering, uh, that are quite useful for analyzing uh, this uh, other type of data. 
Uh, of course, statistical analysis is a very um, uh, big uh, topic that we have uh, mentioned a few things, but that has uh, evolved and uh, there is uh, quite uh, interesting methodologies that can be used to characterize complex phenomena and uh, music in particular. Also pattern analysis, and uh, we, we think of uh, many of these uh, types of data as uh, some time information, and the idea of patterns is a very important concept to extract. And uh, within that field, there has been uh, quite a, a lot of progress in terms of uh, methodologies that are allow to identify patterns in general, and that can be applied uh, to uh, these type of music signals. And finally, the area of machine learning uh, that we have introduced uh, last uh, week uh, to talk about clustering or classification of uh, sounds within a collection uh, has uh, yielded uh, quite uh, very sophisticated methodologies that can be applied to a wide variety of problems and a wide variety of data and uh, develop methodologies that learn from the data so that uh, we can automatically extract knowledge from um, the data. And then there is a, another area of, of uh, research or of methodologies that is uh, what we call the semantic technologies or also called the semantic web that uh, uh, is a quite recent field of research that again uh, uh, has uh, brought uh, quite a few uh, new approaches to understand data to extract information about data and uh, things like network analysis so when you have a, a, a corpus of data and you want to find relationships between uh, these uh, types of uh, data or these data points network analysis can give us quite, uh, a, a, quite a, a lot of insight on the structure of these relationships ontologies is another uh, area of uh, computer science uh, coming from this uh, semantic web uh, type of approaches that uh, uh, has been a very good um, source of structuring the data. So the idea of developing ontologies, of developing structured data, uh, ways to, to, uh, to describe the relationships between entities within a particular field of knowledge, in this case music, can help us a lot in then describing describing and analyzing uh, these data and finally uh, well music is not just the data uh, music uh, involves people involve uh, relationships so all user centered studies and these uh, there are many types of user centered studies can also bring uh, quite a bit of insight into the music so all the issues of perception cognition how we perceive uh, uh, the music and developing uh, uh, sort of experiments or user-driven experiments on the interaction between people and music can uh, definitely give us a lot of insights into the music. And the human-computer interaction field, so the, the, the more the interface aspect of things, uh, also uh, is a very fruitful area of study. The idea of we interact with instruments, we interact with the music, we need interfaces. So the study of these interfaces and how uh, they relate to our understanding or our uh, sort of uh, use of music is uh, also a very fruitful area of uh, study that uh, can help us in, uh, in uh, understanding and modeling uh, music signals. Anyway, so this was some of just some, uh, some uh, highlights, some mention of some things that uh, hopefully gives you a, a much broader view of what we are talking about and that clearly extend uh, our field of study to many different directions, many fields of uh, study, many methodologies, and there's a lot of very interesting uh, topics around uh, these areas. Um, in terms of references uh, for uh, these type of things, uh, uh, since I have been talking about so many things, of course, it's, it's huge and you can, uh, uh, you can uh, search in many different places. In the, this, uh, the, the SMS uh, page of uh, the MTG, uh, there is uh, some information, especially links to articles that extend the type of analysis and synthesis techniques that we have been doing 
and introduce uh, many other approaches for modeling and, and uh, parametrizing and synthesizing sound. So that's a, a good source of articles that you can look at. Uh, there is this road, roadmap on music information research uh, that was uh, recently uh, published, in which you have the link here. And that's also a good source of uh, lines of directions related to uh, studying uh, music information and bringing all these different uh, new areas of study and identifying what things are interesting or not. And in terms of these different fields of uh, uh, methodologies uh, that uh, can be used. Uh, in Wikipedia you can find a lot of references for statistics and for machine learning, for other types of these semantic type uh, analysis, what is also called knowledge representations and reasoning, and all these user type of studies. Uh, you can look at uh, music psychology, you can look at, uh, at the human-computer interaction and uh, uh, through them uh, I am sure you will be able to find a lot of very interesting literature that describes all these uh, studies that music is at the center, but that uh, uh, approach it from uh, quite uh, different perspectives. Of course, uh, these slides are all still available on the SMS tools. And uh, that was all. So this was just uh, uh, one lecture in this week that tried to open up what we have been talking about. Uh, opening up within audio signal processing, but also outside signal processing. And hopefully that uh, uh, gave you some insights into new uh, ventures and new venues that uh, you can take. So thank you very much. See you next class.